Hi all, I would like to show you a wonderful chess composition because uh, there was great interest yesterday in uh, some of the compositions presented. And it's very easy to miss the hidden treasures of a composition. That's one thing I learned personally from yesterday. So let's have a go with this one and see if I can actually show you some of the hidden treasures at least of the position. Uh, if I give you five seconds to pause the video here, can you find uh, the mate in two? So starting from now to pause the video. Okay, so I don't know how many of you uh, properly researched the mate in two. You might have found a mate in two, but the beauty of it is not just finding the mate in two, finding all the uh, unraveling, all, all the resources, all the, rele all the relevant variations where black struggles to um, avoid the mate in two and how they're each refuted. Um, just a quick intro about this though. This, so this composition is by Godfrey Heathcote. Uh, it won first prize at the Hampshire and the Highgate Express 1905 to 1906. Heathcote composed about 500 direct mates with natural and economical positions. He had been uh, the best, he may have been the best British problemist at the beginning of the 20th century. Many of his problems were compiled in AC White. Christmas series called Chess Idealist 1918. Uh, okay, so he's a great composer. And the first move is actually uh, Rook here. Basically, the implied, one of the main implied uh, mates, well, is Knight C3 now. If White's given another move, Knight C3 is actually a mate in one. Uh, anything else, if we examine why this is the main mate in one to start off with, B4. Is not a mate in one because there'll be knight b3. The knight is a kind of hero, it seems, to stop the mate in two here. Uh, queen e4, uh, we can do that, and then um, knight c3, but that's that's a mate in two. Okay, uh, so there's nothing really going on apart from knight, knight c3 is the main uh, intended threat. But the beauty here, okay, after this. Is, is Black's responses. So I'm going to try and be systematic here in, in going over them. First of all, if Black tries e2, that's not really interfering with knight c3. Uh, we just play knight c3 checkmate. Okay, we've got our mate in two. But let's try now knight c2. And this does something actually which interferes with knight c3 being mate. It gives the king. Uh, the d4 square. The king's got d4. We've blown our mate in two. But on the other hand, there's no knight b3 resource, a weakness of the last move, you could say, in the problem world. So actually, b4 is checkmate, that weakness of the last move exposed there. We've still got our mate in two. So where else can this pesky knight move to avoid things? On knight e2, you might think, hold on a sec. Um, so here, how does this affect things? Well, the knight c3 is directly interfered with. So white has though another mate here. Actually, white has. You see, there's a weakness of the last move here. Funny enough, I think this is an easy way of looking at it. It's actually blocked in the bishop. That's the weakness of that last move. And logically, scientifically, that means actually queen takes h5, taps into that weakness of the last move. And this happens to be checkmate here. We're covering all the squares. So yeah, I think we'll, we'll use the weakness of the last move to demonstrate these. <laughs> okay, knight takes b3. Uh, now here, with knight takes b3, uh, knight c3 again is not um, not a problem. There's, there's king d4, but there is actually. Can you spot the mate in one here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, it's actually there's actually queen d3 here. That's checkmate. Uh, yeah, um, that that didn't. Um, you see, I guess the weakness of the last move here, the knight is actually literally pinned. Uh, so because of that pin, there's no knight d4, so there's a kind of weakness there. If you see on the knight e2, that wasn't working because then 
then it didn't exist because there was knight d4. We haven't actually pinned the knight. <laughs> yes, this is quite complex to explain. Okay, so knight f3. Uh, can you see the mate in one here? Well, first, what is the weakness for the last move? But I'll give you five seconds to pause the video here to find the mate in one. Okay, with the weakness for the last move here, we block this queen from e4. So queen d3 is knight d4 is not the mating one, but the mating one's actually here, queen e4. Yes, we're going round to merry round with this knight. Knight b5. Okay, um, if I give you five seconds here, what would you play for the mating one? Okay, the weakness for the last move there, it's blocking in the rook from c5. So we can actually play rook c5. Checkmate. This is a bit like the, those wise old tales of <laughs> about what city someone um, w was last visiting and, and what their problems are. <laughs> you look at the, what the last move is and the weakness of the last move and, and <laughs> we can carry on like this. Um, knight f5, can you spot uh, the mate and one here. Okay, the problem is it blocks this rook, so there's rook e5, checkmate here. <laughs> Knight c6. What's the mate and one here, do you think? If I give you five seconds. Okay, it's actually. Uh, rook here, rook, that one is, is actually checkmate. The, the knight has actually blocked the king from c6. It's solved the c6 problem. So that's that kind of weakness in the last move. It's self blocked the king. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, so, yeah, we've, we're up to knight c6. Knight e6, can you spot the mate in one? Okay, we've still self blocked the king this time with e6. So this this is a checkmate here. There's no king e6. Okay, and now we can actually go in. So we've exhausted most of the knight moves, I believe. Uh, every single knight move uh, seems to fail. But there's more to it. It carries on. The other hidden treasure, well, there's, there's a little bit more to it, actually. Um, we see that in most cases, like bishop c2, any bishop moves, there's knight c3. Okay, bishop e2, there's knight c3, fine. Bishop takes b3, there's knight c3. It's not really interfering with knight c3 as much as any knight moves so far. Uh, bishop f3, there's knight c3. Yes, nothing special there. Bishop g4, knight c3. Uh, bishop f2, knight c3. Okay, so we can actually establish that the bishops, um, either bishops, they don't interfere, it seems, at all with knight c3. Now, what about uh, the rooks? <laughs> Going around the orchestra here, the rooks, what do they have to say about this? Okay, rook b5, knight c3, doesn't interfere. Rook c5, yes, it does interfere with knight c3. Or does it? Uh, yes, it does. Knight c3 here, there's rook takes c3, and the composer had to bear this in mind, so he had to work out, okay, this rook movement to c5. Okay, on the rook movement to c5, <clears throat> we have actually uh, a slight snag with this, that white can actually just take that, and that's checkmate. Yes, that's the weakness of that one. Um, on rook h3, knight c3, Rook h4, knight c3, these, these don't change the pitch. Rook f5, knight c3, rook g5, knight c3, rook h6, knight c3. <laughs> We're just exhausting all, all the others, knight c3. So in fact, it seems, apart from rook c5, uh, in conclusion, uh, it's all the knight moves which are a bit tricky here. Um, so the, the pawn move here doesn't help. There's, there's only that pawn to move. 
So this is why it won the first prize. It's virtually just the, the knight movements are all being demonstrated. The knight in the center, which is a strong piece, form the actual beauty of this composition. Um, just just to go through that again. Uh, so if you want a quick mate in one test, uh, quick fire. Here here goes. Okay, we're going to start rotating the knight. Okay, so knight c2. What's the chat mate? Okay, it's b4 check mate. Knight e2. What's the chat mate? Okay, it's queen takes h5 chat mate. Knight 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 takes b3. What's the chat mate? It's queen d3. That's checkmate. Knight f3. What do you play there on knight f3 for mating one? That's queen e4. <laughs> knight b5. It blocks the rook. There's rook c5. Checkmate. Knight f5. It blocks the rook. Rook e5. Checkmate. Knight c6. It blocks the c6 square. Rook d7. Checkmate. Knight e6. Blocks the e6 square. Rook e d7. Checkmate. So yeah, it's been carefully constructed as a beautiful composition with that knight. Um, in all variations, it's still a mating two. The only the only thing which interferes as well. Is, is rook c5. The other rook moves, they don't seem to interfere with knight c3 coming up next. Uh, yeah, I think that's the only thing. Um, hang on. Uh oh, hang on. There's something I missed here at the end. The queen moves. There's a queen move. <laughs> oh, this is a corker. Oh dear. Um, yes. Is is there one more move that interferes? The queen move here doesn't interfere. The queen move here, apparently queen e4. Just quickly check this. No, it doesn't interfere. Although it provides another mate as well, queen e4 as well as this. These are both mates in one. So the queen the queen movement is not not to be factored in. So mostly it's the knights that are really interesting as part of this composition. Um, so I hope you've given some justice to this composition here. You really need to be exhaustive and see like all all the weakness of the last moves basically uh, for the mate to be enforced, the stipulated mate. So I hope this gives some glimpse into the problem world carrying on from yesterday. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.